So it is the middle of June and we're still getting a whole bunch of food off of this garden. Um, however, I think that next season I'm going to end up changing out these tomato plants because they are not the best ones for my garden. And I'll tell you why. Hey and welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about gardening and homesteading in the suburbs. My name is Veronica and this is our June garden tour. Now this month we have had a lot of things happening in the garden. Firstly, starting off with our garden cleanup that I had to do when we came back from vacation. The garden was a complete mess. We were gone for nine days and so there was a lot of stuff that I had to prune and trellis and it just kind of exploded with new growth. And I'm talking like a foot worth of new growth off of our tomato vines and that sort of thing. So it has been a lot this month, um, especially with us being away for a little bit. But in addition to that, it's also been really hot as I'm sure it has been throughout the rest of the country as well. We have been impacted by a lot of heat waves um, and then a lot of downpours followed by a lot of time without any rain at all. So it's been a little interesting, but we're still growing food in other years past. Um, I haven't been getting tons of stuff from the garden in June like I am now, and we are still harvesting beans. We're still harvesting tomatoes. Um, we have a lot of stuff, even salad greens. So let me turn the camera around and show you guys what we've got this month. All right, so I'm gonna start on this side of the garden um, with all of our dilapidated Roma tomatoes. Um, these were actually supposed to have been trellis. Well, let me take that back. I was going to do garden cleanup and kind of trellis these back into place so they're not kind of like leaning, um, but I would have had to remove the entire like Florida weave set up here. And so I decided not to do that um, just because that would have been a lot of work. And these tomatoes are to be honest probably on their way out um, but we are still getting a whole bunch we did have quite a bit of tomato um, blossom and rot so this was something that I was able to fix in the majority of it but we're still getting a few um, as we go along I'm gonna harvest this is actually some that I had there and I stepped on by accident but we're getting a whole bunch like this as well from the birds pecking at them and then whatever these little I don't even know what these little bugs are. If somebody knows what they are, if I can get a close up here, please let me know. Um, but yeah, we've been, we've been getting a lot of new pests in the garden this season. However, we're still getting quite a few romas, so I can't complain too much. They're not as big as I would like, um, and we do have quite a few of them like this, but that's okay. Oh, maybe not that one's okay. This one is okay, um, so I'll save that one. And then anything with blossom end rot, if it's not too bad, um, this one probably is gonna go for the discard pile, but anything that's not too bad, you can just cut off the ends and save um, the rest of it. But, oh my gosh, we are getting tons of pest. Guys, I'm a little bit more bummed out than I thought I was gonna be during this garden tour. All right, so we got a good one there. Then we got one that I think something tried to get in here but it's closed up, so I don't think anything burrowed its way all the way inside, although we shall find out once I harvest it. But we are getting quite a few good ones. Um, they're not as big, but that's all right. I will still take it since we are probably wrapping up our season here. That's my little tomato discard pile. This one's pretty good. And as I harvest, I am harvesting anything that isn't quite red. You can see it's starting to turn red, but it's mostly orange. I'm going to go ahead and harvest that anyway because that is less chance that the pest will find it. Um, and more tomatoes for me, along with anything that kind of looks like it, you know, is harboring pests in here. I go ahead and remove those like this one here. I'm going to get this out of the way so that nothing else makes its home in there. But for this set, I think it's like six plants. That is what we've got. And I don't know if you can hear that, but we have a whole bunch of thunder coming in. So I'll try to go quick, but we do have a lot. Now, even though my tomatoes are getting a little bit more pest damage than I'm used to, I was able to create about a gallon's worth of homemade pasta sauce just off of my Roman tomato plants, um, six on this side, six on that side. So it does not take a lot of um, space, right, to grow stuff that you can actually feed your family with. And we turned that tomato sauce into pasta and a whole bunch of other things and marinara and just stuff that we can actually use to feed our family and just enjoy it really so if you are looking for a place to start or how to start you know your own garden to feed your family and grow 
stuff in a small space don't forget to check out my free um, urban gardening checklist that i have i will leave that in the description bar below which is eight simple steps to starting your dream garden along with my starting your urban vegetable garden workbook which is a complete 46 page guide to starting your urban vegetable garden in a small space maximizing your food production and basically guiding you through the entire setup and maintenance and everything design layouts all of that stuff to set up your own garden in a small space just like this one so next up is our beans right these are jade bush beans they have been doing ridiculously well and i really wish milo would stop watering the garden um, but thankfully he only gets the bottom here which is why this is kind of nasty looking he can't actually reach inside the plants thankfully um, but we are getting lots of new green growth um, it is as you can see um, getting a little bit of pest damage on these and we do have some like you know heat wave stuff going on here um, you can see some of the leaves dried up but ultimately these are still producing we have you know little green beans coming out and we are still getting um, quite a few off of these i did harvest a lot when we came back from vacation um, so that's why there's like tons of new growth when you harvest them you know it kicks it into production and we're still getting flowers so i'm gonna leave these intact for right now um, and i had seen some mature beans and pods like this one over here um, i'm gonna let them grow and the same thing with our yellow beans now the yellow beans have kind of slowed down production way more um, than the jade bush beans these are i think some sort of french yellow bean i can't remember exactly what it's called but it's a wax bean um, and so i really like these and i started letting some of them go to seed um, like this one right here so i can seed save which was one of my goals for this year but we've definitely slowed down production so i think anything else in here um, that we get off of our yellow beans that is going to end up being for seed saving since we're really not getting tons off of these anymore now during my garden cleanup i came and removed all of these cucumber plants because they had a whole bunch of powdery mildew um, and just they were kind of on their way out with all the heat anyway so we got rid of those which gave our tomatoes a lot more room um, which is good because they are spreading like crazy you can see we have lots of little cherry tomatoes um, along with these new little garden pests which I was doing some research on and at first I thought that they were assassin bugs which are good because they eat other types of pests right as the name implies assassin but it turns out that they're not they are some version of like flat leaf footed leaf footed insects i think is what they're called and they are spreading like wildfire because i originally thought that they were not bad for the garden and i didn't touch them and now they're everywhere um and so i think that's definitely a learning experience this um this season is to do a lot more research on the pests that you find um and you can see we have some leaf curl here um i don't know if this is maybe because of the heat um it seems like it because they're getting a little bit crunchy um but we do have tons and tons of tomatoes and to be honest i haven't seen too many holes and like bad side effects of these bugs being here but i, I probably will take that back um once they um expand and i haven't really done anything to get rid of them so that is my next step to come through and get rid of all of these guys now as i mentioned at the beginning of the video these are not my favorite tomatoes i've ever grown um, i can't remember what they're called or really i can pronounce it so i will leave it here somewhere on the screen so you guys can see i like the taste right they're not overly sweet um, they are kind of not as resistant as i would like them to be i mean this has like cutworms and stuff in it so i don't think anything is going to be super resistant but i've been getting a lot of these little bruised areas on the plants themselves even the ones unlike this one um even the ones that don't have like actual pest damage still have like these little bruise spots and i'm not exactly sure what that's from i've never seen it on any of my other tomato varieties that i've grown i'm trying to find one to show you guys but i think i had taken off all of them um to get rid of them already but essentially it would be like a little brown or like mushy kind of spot on the plant and i've never seen that on any of the other plants or when i take them off right like when i start harvesting them all right and i put them on the countertop right they will end up with a little mushy kind of spot in them a couple of days later so i'm not really a fan of that and then next to my beans and kind of like next to and under my tomatoes over here we have arugula um, this arugula is still doing pretty well um, it doesn't have too much pest damage which is good but i think the heat is starting to get to it because this like this ultra tall one here is in fact starting to 
try to bolt um, you can see like the stems are getting like really thick and woody um, in comparison to the rest of them and I have been harvesting this a ton I definitely thought I was gonna need more of it this season I planted out at the beginning of the season I planted out only four square feet so that's two feet and this is two feet and we have not even been able to keep up with the amount of arugula that we have in these four square feet let alone these six square feet I'm accustomed to planting out so I think that this is probably a good amount of arugula and it's kind of starting to take over everything else as well um, we have some scallions in here which are kind of being taken over um, but these are doing really well and that is pushing into our little kale patch here now i haven't actually been able to harvest any kale this season um, it started off really good all of my little sprouts and seedlings started coming up and then a couple weeks later i started seeing tons of this damage right my cutworm damage which i'm accustomed to um, however i started spraying bt and i put down a whole bunch of coffee grounds you can see some of the coffee grounds still in here but really these plants never fully recovered um, and so what i'm gonna try to do next season is i will start these ahead of time in my little mini greenhouse and i will transplant them out here um, once they're a little bit larger it seems to be not as affected by it um, you can see like the plants themselves are trying to come back right this is the previous pest damage Ooh, and I don't know if you can hear all that thunder um, but some of the leaves are doing really well um, once I started getting rid of the pests a little bit more but still they just they just really never recovered um, the arugula right next to it doesn't seem to have that problem and the mustard doesn't seem to have that problem probably because and this is just speculation but probably because the amount of like aroma that comes from the mustard and the arugula the kale does not have that so I think that probably you know it just needs to be started elsewhere and my bunching onions my scallions here also doing really well i have some um, lemon balm back here which is also as you can see getting eaten alive but it seems to have recovered a little bit better than my kale the mustard greens definitely suffering a little bit because of the heat these are significantly more heat resistant than other salad greens um as you can tell we have some of that like purplish color coming through but you can see also it's starting to look a little bit more wilty than normal and it's definitely not grown nearly as tall as it has in other seasons so the heat is starting to get to that um, the basil over here is doing much better than it was at the beginning of the season and as you can see it is also getting a little bit eaten um, but ultimately doing really well and it has a really nice scent um, the same thing I have lemon thyme and basil over here this one um, this entire area here is behind this tree and it gets a little bit more shade than the rest of the garden so I think maybe that was probably not a good idea to plant basil there but the parsley is doing really well um, we have a whole bunch of parsley and what I'm gonna try to do is leave some of my herbs um, as you can see I kind of like sprinkled it throughout I have my oregano over here which is doing okay um, some lemon thyme and a whole bunch of parsley which is just actually starting to come up now when I planted it at the same time as everything else but I'm probably gonna leave my herbs um, and just plant around it in fall and see what happens. I mean, I'm gonna try to interplant a little bit more than I have been, which brings us over here to our leaning <laughs> tomatoes again. Now the same thing on this side, right? You can see these are leaning significantly more than I would have liked. Um, we do get a lot of tomatoes off of these plants. They're doing really well um, and I had seen another whoops another one over there which just went flying um, but these ones are doing relatively well I've actually been collecting a lot of these and making sauce out of them I'm trying to find oh well, we have a whole bunch of rotted ones in here that I didn't get to in time oh no see this is why oh what is that what are all these little pests someone if you know what these little pest things are I can't what is that it seems to not like the camera I just don't know what that is um, this is why I harvest them early because the sooner you harvest them the less chance that things get to them like these ones in here that are actually not doing well I don't think I'm gonna be able to harvest a good portion of these and we have a stink bug in here somewhere too so maybe these ones are almost on their way out also these ones have a lot more pests in them than I saw a couple of days ago so these are gonna go straight in compost um, along with 
pretty much everything that I picked up from this side. I think those two are fine for right now, but everything else is going in compost and the heat can kill off all those pests. Now, over here on the side of the garden, I do have an entire raised bed that I have yet to plant out. The plan for this is to plant okra and sweet potatoes. And the same thing for this raised bed over here. Now, I'm going to be putting drip irrigation throughout the entire garden, which, to be honest with you, now is probably a good time to do that when I rip out these tomatoes. I was planning on leaving the tomatoes a little bit longer, but I think the pests have won this time around. Um, so we'll get them next time and we might be ripping out a whole bunch of stuff um, really, really soon, which is fine because then we'll have tons more space for my okra and all of these sweet potato slips that we have growing in here with my little <laughs> garden, my little mini greenhouse, which doesn't seem to want to stay up, um, but that's fine. I don't put anything on this shelf here. So out of these ones and I'm just waiting to see if they actually grow any more slips um, but I think they might be done these sweet potatoes I think there's like 10 or 20 of them in there and then we have a whole bunch more growing roots in water they have definitely already established roots um, so really I'm just waiting at this point to get my drip irrigation system in there get my beds cleared out and then we'll be having a whole bunch of sweet potato cuttings go straight in the garden and plus these ones, there's like a good 20 more in here, which I didn't even see right by my feet. So we definitely have tons of sweet potatoes. Um, whatever doesn't get planted out here in these beds, and Milo wants some attention. It's okay, puppy. Whatever doesn't get planted out in these beds over here is gonna go into the food forest because I think the potatoes are, or sweet potatoes at least, are pretty deer resistant from what I was reading and hopefully we'll be able to save some and not give them to the deer. Another thing that has been doing really well in this little mini greenhouse is my rosemary. So when I pruned my rosemary bushes a couple weeks, maybe a month ago or so now, I put them in water and as you can see, they're growing a whole bunch of these roots, um, which I'm gonna take after that and put them in dirt um, individually, right? These are gonna actually be for our home that we're building. We're currently in the progress um, of hopefully getting permits soon, um, but really soon. And then each one of these will grow into a giant rosemary bush and serve as landscape. All right, so I've harvested all of our tomatoes, which we got a few. Um, it wasn't as much as I was expecting, to be honest, but not so bad um, because we had to throw a whole bunch of them into the compost pile um, with our pest issues that we've been having. I definitely thought we had a little bit more under control, but you know, that's life, especially when you go on vacation and you leave the garden unattended for more than a week. But so far, I'm pretty happy with the June progress, especially because just a couple of days ago, I was able to harvest an entire basket full of tomatoes, which I made into sauce and confit and a whole bunch of other things. Now, I will be planting out our two raised garden beds very, very soon. I'm gonna try to install drip irrigation this week, get that set up. I will likely be ripping up some of this stuff in here because I just don't wanna have to um, come in here to try and harvest stuff that is completely ridden you know, with um, a whole bunch of pests. So I might be ripping things up a little bit sooner than I was anticipating, but we are in the middle of summer, so I can't be too upset with that. Um, I'm going to be planting out all of my stuff in here. And of course, I will take you guys along with me while I'm planting out all the stuff for the end of summer garden as well. Kind of that transition plan between summer and my fall planting. Um, but don't forget to check out the free urban gardening checklist to start your dream garden in eight simple steps. I will leave that in the description box below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.